guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Jessica Ward King, the Stigma Crusher here, and a happy new year to everyone. I hope you had a great holiday season. I know I did. I had a very restful holiday season. I went home to my parents' house, got very much taken care of and babied, and it was wonderful. I didn't realize how much I needed it until I got it, and boy, did I need it. Um, and so here we are back in a brand new year and uh, I hope you are, if you've made your resolutions, that you are sticking to them. We are about 12 days into the new year as I'm filming this and it is about that time where New Year's resolutions start to break down if they are going to break down and uh, so I hope that yours are st staying firm. Um, I know that mine are so far. Um, I made one resolution to stay more in touch with friends during this new year and I am doing that. I'm on track to be doing that. So that is one resolution that I am sticking to and I am proud to be sticking to. I am still on my keto diet. Uh, I did go off of it for a week during the Christmas season and enjoyed all the yummy Christmas treats uh, and went right back on it a week later and um, am back into ketosis and uh, am right back on the train. So uh, I will keep you updated with that and we'll have some more content about the ketogenic diet and its effects on mental health uh, in this new year. But today, I am here to talk about uh, a new blog that was published today by the Mental Health Commission of Canada that I wrote uh, about getting culturally competent care as a 2SLGBTQ2I person. So I am a member of the uh, 2SLGBTQ2I community. I'm a lesbian woman and I have had the opportunity to partake in mental health care that was culturally competent for my community. So when I was first coming out, I was fortunate to live in a very large metropolitan city, uh, London, um, in the UK. And there were services for youth that were coming out. Uh, mental health services that were specialized for LGBTQ2 youth uh, that were coming out at the time. And I was fortunate enough to get care that where I didn't have to explain my, my well, it was then my new community's significance, where I didn't have to explain the significance of pride, where I didn't have to explain why it might be dangerous for me to come out to my parents or why it might be um, desirable or undesirable for me to come out to my friends or what that might mean in my my faith community um, all of those things were understood by the therapist that I was seeing at the time because they were from the same community as me and so that was a really big uh, benefit to me uh, at that time because I didn't I didn't even have a complete understanding of what I was going through as an, a new um, a person new to the community. So I didn't even have a full conversant understanding of all of these things. And so to have to have that understanding there already uh, when I was having mental health care that I didn't have to explain because I didn't have the language to explain all of these things. I just, I, I knew that, you know, for me, you know, something wasn't safe or didn't feel comfortable and I didn't maybe know why. And to have that understanding already there because the person that I was speaking to was already a member of the community and had had similar experiences was very, very valuable to me because I, I didn't feel safe already. And I was also new to mental health care and didn't feel safe in, in the therapeutic relationship to begin with. And so to have that understanding where I didn't have to explain myself, I didn't have to explain the, the cultural understanding, I didn't have to explain myself in that mental health context, was really, really valuable to me. And so when I approach a therapeutic relationship now as a lesbian woman, uh, it's, it is always on my mind whether the therapeutic relationship that I need in that moment is one where I need that cultural competency. Because it's important when you're entering into a therapeutic relationship that you have in mind whether what you're going to discuss in that relationship is something for which you need to have that understanding. 
And I think that that's true whether you're talking about the 2SLGBTQ2I community or whether you're talking about the black community or the Muslim community or whatever minority or marginalized community it is that you're talking about. Um, it, it, it really doesn't matter. It's the, the fact of being in a community where, there are, where there's a cultural understanding that might not be understood by and just any counselor right? Just any mainstream counselor, just any potentially, just, just potentially any counselor that you might find on off the street. There might be a lack of understanding of just from just any counselor of those cultural competencies that you might need to have implicitly understood if you're going to get the most out of your therapeutic relationship. Now, that said, you don't always need that cultural competency for every therapeutic relationship. So for example, right now I'm receiving uh, therapy from a psychologist who is not a member of the LGBTQ2 community, oh, sorry, the 2S LGBTQ2 community. Um, they are, um, he is, is, is a, a white cisgendered straight man and our therapeutic relationship is working just fine because the therapy that I'm going for is to talk about work stuff and life coping skills and my bipolar disorder and how I'm dealing with that and how I'm dealing with depression and it's not how I'm dealing with anything to do with my culture as a 2S LGBTQ2I person. It has nothing to do with my, for example, my relationship with my wife as um, not as individuals, sure, I talk about my relationship with my wife as, as two human beings in a relationship and as, you know, a married couple having a relationship with a child and doing married things, but not as a lesbian couple because we're lesbians. So we don't, I don't go to my, my therapist and talk about lesbian things. I don't go to my therapist and talk about things for which I would need that understanding of our relationship as lesbians. I don't go to my therapist and talk about things for which I need that cultural competency. And I don't foresee in my therapeutic relationship as I go forward, the need for that. If there comes a time where I'm going to need that, I would need to find another therapist because the therapist I have right now as a cisgendered, straight white man would not have necessarily that cultural competency. Now I might say to him, do you have an understanding? Do you have, you know, a friend, a sister, uh, a, a brother, uh, you know, uh, an in-law, uh, you know, something where, where that gives you that cultural insight that gives you that competency. Do you have specific training perhaps? that gives you that insight and perhaps he would surprise me. Perhaps he would say, yes, I do have this kind of training or perhaps he does have that life experience that would give him insight that would surprise me. And so you can't discount necessarily just because someone isn't a member of the community that they would have that kind of insight. Um, but it does help quite often if you are looking for that cultural competency to have someone who is actually a member of the community that you're seeking. And so I've often heard friends of mine who are a member of, for example, the black community say that they are looking for a black therapist and it's difficult to find, or it's difficult to find a 2S LGBTQ2I therapist because there's no like app for that. You know, you, you can't, it's not, it's not like dating. And that's in, in the blog post that I've created. That's what I liken it to. It's, it's it, trying to find a therapist is quite a lot like the dating scene. But unlike dating where you can, you know, swipe left or swipe right and you can go in, into a dating app and you can be very specific in your criteria of what you're looking for, it's much more difficult to find a therapist that way because you're, you're looking to tick quite a few boxes with a the therapist. You're looking for a price range. You're looking for a geographic location. You're looking for timings that fit your schedule. You're looking for whether they're online or in person. You know, you're looking for uh, someone who actually fits your kind of vibe, who you actually fit with as a human being. 
And so when you're trying to tick all these boxes and try to find someone that's part of, you know, a part of your minority or, or special community, it starts to narrow this, this playing field quite a bit. And it can be very difficult to find someone that really fits all the bill that you're looking for. Um, and it can sort of start to seem like a bit of a needle in a haystack. And I have found with myself and with friends of mine as well that it, it can almost get to the point where it's like, well, either you find someone you vibe with, you fit with, or you find someone who is a member of your community, but not necessarily both. You just kind of, you either, you know, find someone you fit with or you settle. Um, and, and that's not a, a good way to be, right? Uh, you don't want to settle for a therapist because you're going to be building a relationship with this person. You're going to be telling them, you know, all of your, 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 your thoughts and feelings. You're going to be trying to work with them on these things. You're going to be trying to work with them on, on a, a, you know, weekly or biweekly basis on a long term basis. And you don't want to be settling or having this feeling that this relationship that you're building is based on this unfulfilled sentiment of settling. And so what would I recommend you do? Well, there are apps or there are websites that you can use that can help you to, to look for a therapist that is culturally competent in the way that you're looking for. Psychology Today is one of the apps, or one of the websites rather, it's not quite an app, um, but a website that can help you narrow down the search. And it can help you search by location and, and by other criteria as well as by your cultural competency of choice. And then what I would recommend you do is once you've kind of narrowed down to a few choices, play the field a little bit. It's like dating, right? Like play the field a little bit. Make appointments with a few and go and have like a, a look-see appointment with a few different therapists to see if you, what you, feel like about them, how you feel towards them, if you get that vibe off of them. Um, and it can get a little bit pricey to do this. Sometimes you can get a kind of a, a, a look-see appointment with a therapist that is, you know, a, a half hour appointment or even sometimes a 15 minute appointment that doesn't cost anything. So look into that, whether you can get that with a, a like just, just a, a, a meet and greet appointment with a therapist. Um, to see if you if you if you vibe with them, but um, if, even if you can, if you can get a half hour appointment with the therapist just to see if you if you if you really gel as people, because you're going to be building a relationship with this person, and don't feel bad about you know saying to the person like this this doesn't work this we we don't gel we don't work together. Because they're therapists, they're, they're used to this. They also get the feeling off of clients when th things aren't working very well together. And then once you've picked one that seems to work the best for you, give them a couple sessions, give them a few sessions to, you know, to get in the groove of things and to give yourself a few sessions to get used to them as well. And if things still aren't going well or that you're just not feeling it, ask them for a referral. They may have a colleague that they think that now that they get to know you a little bit better, they think that you would work really well with, or they might be able to refer you to another clinic somewhere else where, that they know of that has culturally competent cl clinicians that you might be able to work with. So you won't be starting right from scratch. Or another op alternative for you is if you do have a clinician that you're working with that you do work well with, but that isn't culturally competent. So whether that's a, a doctor or a social worker or, or a psychologist that you're working with now, but they're not culturally competent, ask them if they have someone in mind that is culturally competent that you could work with. They may surprise you. They may have someone in mind that could work with you that is 2SLGBTQ2A or perhaps black or Muslim or whatever the case is, whatever cultural competency it is that you're searching for. So it doesn't hurt to ask. You can always kind of network that way. It's kind of like asking a friend of a friend for a date recommendation, right? So I would recommend that you start work in the room if you're looking for a counselor that is culturally competent. It's not a hopeless task. It is difficult, I'm not gonna lie. And also 
try to keep in mind that you might not always need a culturally competent counselor, at least not right away. I would recommend that you take a look at the blog. Uh, there's some useful information in there as well as links. And um, I will see you in my next one. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Bye. Stigma Crusher.